Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the rumpled one. Just trade it. There's so many systems out there, methods, ideas. Just pick one and trade it. I mean, don't expect to win every time. It's just not going to happen. That's not the way trading works. It's not an exact science. It's more like uh, a hybrid. There's some math to it. There's some science to it. There's some art, discretion, etc. So just trade it. And try not to uh, mess with it, because that's what will get you in trouble. You start to overthink, as opposed to just taking the trade and seeing what happens. Because it doesn't matter how much or how little thought you put in before the trade. Once you take the trade, it's kind of like, well, rather than all bets are off, it's like all bets are on. And then you just have to uh, see what happens. Either the market smiles upon you and you grab some profit, or you just have to save as much of your stake as you can and you take a loss. So let's take a look at the dashboard, and it looks like there's a lot of things to pick from. Let's see, we've got the uh, British pounds inside the low zone, so that's a possible trade. See, we Canadian dollars between zones. The euro's in the rat zone. And so is the Swiss franc. Well, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at the euro. We'll switch this over to the euro. So what I have here is the uh, sweet spots gold indicator. But I have it set for um, three pips. Because usually on most pairs... The spread is two, two and a half or so pips. And I've got one of the indicators I wrote here, the spread alert. And you can see right now it's under two pips. Because anytime it's under two pips. So the whole idea is if you enter between these two lines, then it's going to pretty much have to get outside of these lines to make a profit. So if you were to go long here, you're not going to see a profit till that spread's covered. I mean, of course, that's basic, but it's something you have to look at. When you see the price action here, you can see there's only really like six pick movement for about, what, the past mm, 15 minutes or so or more. So you're not going to make too many pips with this six pick movement when you've got to... Uh, give up a pip or so now here with the um, euro on this on FXCM we've got a kind of a low spread here so it's not too bad and we see we got the H4 is red and the H1 is green so we're kind of wondering which way to go daily is we're down for the day too so this chart all I have are these sweet spot lines because I don't want to think. I just want to trade what I'm looking at. So you can see here, you can call this consolidation or, or, or some people say price is moving sideways, which you no know, price is moving up and down. It's either within a narrow channel or a larger channel, but it's moving up and down. Because if it's going sideways, there's no movement at all. So you can see how it's just bouncing. It, here now you see there's very few closes in this area so chances are price is going to get rejected out of this area and right here you can see there's very few closes here so chances are price is going to get rejected out of there and it's going to wind up in here for right now and you can see that back here until you get a break price is just pretty much locked down tight so if you're going to take a cross at a line, in other words, if you would have entered right here when the ass dot was here, you'd be in break-even mode. I mean, you might be thinking, wow, those are some really uh, obvious things you're saying there. But yeah, it's true, it's obvious. But the thing is, you have to apply what's obvious. And a lot of people don't.
you know they would rather see a bunch of squiggly lines here and some maybe some more squiggly lines down there and who knows what they got up here but I uh, don't really need all that just quick look house price moving in relation to these different opens because that's all candle color is it's what's how is price in relation to the open you see right here you got a doji it's yellow neither going up or going down so you see here if it didn't move it's going sideways right so you see here we got a little green corresponding I mean really there's not much action at the moment but that's okay because that's the way it is and we can switch over here and look at the pound dollar right now this is an h4 chart see right there it says h4 I don't have any of the other indicators on here just because this is just real simple you've got the daily open from yesterday and today yesterday and today's mid yesterday and today's low yesterday and today's high and those are the points or levels of interest and those are the levels you trade when price cuts across and once again you can see it in hindsight you know there was a trade there was a trade you can just use these lines and take these trades just remember that today's middle today's high today's low can change they will get pushed today's open stays the same once it gets set so right there was today's open so you see here trading long when price moved up through the daily open trading short when price moved down through the daily open just do it just do it just trade it you don't have to think about it just trade it that's that's the whole point of this exercise today just trade it let's see we've got the euro pound I very rarely trade that and you can see here the euros just stuck in the rat zone not doing too much and for those who just tuning in the rat zone is the daily low plus 20 pips anything within 20 pips of the daily low that's the rat zone okay so you can see here we're five pips off that low and I guess the daily low must be about right here so you see here once again price came up to that line if you took it you'd be underwater by the spread and you can just see how price is moving see the uh, h1 just went now, now it's back green again so we don't have those levels marked but what you can always do is switch the time frame it's harder to see the congestion when you go up to the higher time frames So you see here right around the open there was a potential to make six pips if you jumped in right at that open of the h1 candle uh, we're coming up to half past the hour so maybe we can switch over to 15 minute candles and see if we might get a possible trade and if you hit the alt t key it'll bring up the one click trading box now if you have it set for one click trading no confirmation uh, let's put the euro 
over here. You can see it's pretty much in the rat zone. Really not that exciting, is it? Sometimes trading isn't exciting. In fact, trading should never be exciting. It should be boring. You should be executing. Boring, boring, boring. Euro's just stuck there. Let's see, we got a new a new hour bar, so let's see what happens. So if you take the trade right here at the 83, it's got first it's going to have to uh, cover that spread, which is only you know, less than two pips at the moment. But as you can see, it's not, in the last 15 minutes, it didn't even move six pips. Recently, the, uh, the euro hasn't really done much. If we look at the gauge, <laughs> the uh, range today is only 51, average 105. Now let's put up the Swiss franc just because it looks like there may be something happening there. Yeah, it looks like it wants to move up. You can see candle color multimeters all green. And I noticed uh there's a few people who are posting my indicators on other forums. Um, that's not nice. So if you happen to see somebody posting one of my indicators somewhere, tell them not to do it. I mean, I put them out there on Cresslick for people to use. And there's a reason I, I don't want them posted other places. Um, if there's a mistake, a bug, well, and somebody got it from another place and then I fix it, well... They don't know where the indicator came from, so they wouldn't know where to go and get the fix. It's kind of simple. Unless they looked inside the code and saw my email address. Because I always post the uh, source files. There's a bunch of people that don't like to post the source files. I guess they want to keep everything to themselves. Their, their tricks or something, but I mean, that's how programmers learn. You learn from looking at other people's code. You share code. But some people don't hold that point of view, and, you know, that's okay. Well, I hope you learned something today, you know. It doesn't matter. Just trade it. If you've got a method and it says to buy when price hits the line, then just do it. I mean, that's all you have to do. If it says buy when squiggly lines cross, just trade it. Don't overthink it. Don't even really try and improve it. Just do it. Just trade it. And as always, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. The Rumpled One, signing off.